Hey everybody, how are you doing today? Uh, today is Thursday the 10th. <laughs> it's Thursday the 10th. This is Lorena Gordon with Know the Hope with Lorena Gordon. That's me. I'm here for you. Um, today is a daily devotional and of course I'm going to put it on my YouTube uh, channel later. Um, things have just been strange. I'm not doing these from home. Um, because for some reason, too many people on the internet, um, and I'm the latecomer, uh, doing it at 11, 12, 10 o'clock in the morning, then, the, uh, you know, then I can't get, then I can't log on. <laughs> so, so here we are back in my car running errands. <laughs> anyway, I'm here for you, uh, for your daily devotional with prayer. I try to make them as quick as I possibly can. There's just so much to say, um, but I'm so glad that you're joining with me. Hello. Hello everyone that's joining online. Uh, I appreciate you. Um, I would appreciate if you can go on, to, on my YouTube channel, uh, Know the Hope with Lorena Gordon, and subscribe. That would help me out a lot, a lot, a lot. So um, spread this, share this, let them know, let your family know, let your friends know, let your enemies know <laughs> that this is a daily devotional. Uh, and I'm hoping that it helps people out, actually. Um, and let me know if it does. I, I love feedback. I love when everyone um, chimes in and makes comments or when I'm on YouTube that they do the live chat with me, etc. It's just so good. I love to have that um, uh, interaction. And my phone is a little tilted because it's strange the holder <laughs> so bear with me um letting you know tomorrow is promotional friday so if you have a business that you want me to promote i will i'll promote your business if you have uh, merchandise send it to me and i'll promote it for you if you have anything um i'll promote anything any church any ministry any business you know just be a person of integrity, a business of integrity. That's all I ask. Um, and uh, I'll promote that for you. It's promotional Friday tomorrow. Let's get that started. If you have a birthday, if you have a, a, a anniversary shout out or anything like that, I'll be glad to do that for you. All right. Okay. Well, then let's get started with today's devotional. Uh, we have two scriptures for you today. All right. For those of you that are taking notes that's appreciated also um you know and it's 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 for all of us right so uh what we're doing is we're teaching we me we're teaching okay um i'll never regret going to bible college ever that's the those were the best best times of my life it was jaw-dropping the things that were being revealed all the time about learning, learning uh, who you are in Christ, learning God himself, learning the books of the Bible, learning just being a person, being a student, always with the mind of a student and having the heart of a servant. Absolutely. Love you too, Len. Love you too. Woohoo, San Jose. San Jose in the house. <laughs> all right. Um, let's let's get started we got the two bible verses for you today and it's jeremiah 17 jeremiah 17 9 and 10 okay jeremiah jeremiah 17 9 and 10 the next one is proverbs 28 26 proverbs 28 26 okay so uh write those two down we'll get to them but right now we're going to go into the devotional so those of you who have been following me you know my uh know the hope family what do we do right before we start the devotional yes we take that deep breath in we let that out and we're breathing in all that god wants us to learn all that he is speaking to us today and then we exhale that honeydew list that to do um that that um the grocery list it, we'll get there 
You'll get there. Don't worry about that. But right now, it's your learning time. Right now, it's your time with God. So let's sit back. Let's listen to what God has to show us. And you might learn something. I know I always, I always do. I always learn something. When I study God's word and I study for these, for these devotionals, I study. I actually study. I sit at my desk. I sit at home. Or I sit in my car. And I get all my resources and I start studying. So this is what we do. We're going to learn something today. I'm going to learn you. Okay, let's learn what God has for us today. Ready for this? God is not feelings only. God is not feelings only. Woo! This is going to be a good one today. All right. Feelings come up by something we see, we hear, we feel, we, uh, feelings come up because of a, of a, a, of something that we've experienced, something that was said to us, whether they're good feelings or bad feelings. How about you? Have you ever noticed your feelings and your emotions that are tied into all that? Feelings and emotions, feelings and emotions. Okay, how much do you depend on feelings or on your emotions? How much do you depend on those? Okay, watch out though. Do you make decisions based on how, you, how you're feeling at that moment? Be cautious now. Feelings and emotions can be deceiving. The Bible is full of scriptures that talk about feelings, emotions, and the matters of the heart. The book of Proverbs alone just in Proverbs alone is just loaded with feelings, uh, with, I'm sorry, with, with verses that talk about the feelings of how you should receive wise counsel instead of listening to your deceitful mind and heart. Oh, 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 oh. okay. So I looked up the word, um, these two words. I looked up the definitions for feelings. A belief, a feeling comes from a belief, especially a vague or irrational one. That's not me. That's not, that's not necessarily the Bible. I looked it up in just a regular dictionary definition. Okay. Vague or irrational. Okay. Emotions. It's a natural, so now we know it's a human thing, right? Emotions are a natural, instinctive state of mind deriving from one's circumstances, mood, or relationship with others. Okay? Feelings and emotions, some are good, some are bad. You might feel good about an event or about someone. You might feel good about either an event or feeling good about someone. But when that feeling goes away, does that event or someone, are they bad now? No, not necessarily. Mm -hmm. What's left is your feeling about that event or your feeling about that person. Okay? Does, don't confuse feelings and emotions with reality because feelings can be deceiving emotions are, are a roller coaster ride ups and downs your feelings or emotions might change regarding that event regarding that that person stay safe stay balanced in wise counsel Go to God about all your feelings and emotions before making those decisions and God will help you through. Wow. <laughs> Talk about wow about your feelings and emotions. Have you ever wondered why you feel the way you do and we depend on them? Oh, I'm going to get mad. So why are you saying that you're going to get mad? Why don't you say, okay, I'm going to first listen. I'm going to first listen and I'm going to calm myself down. How about that? Right? Feelings. We have to understand something. Feelings, emotions, they're not, they're not, uh, how would I say? They're human reactions. Who made humans? God did. So emotions do come from God. God created you to have emotions, okay? So it's not necessarily a bad thing. 
But when you apply that certain feeling, like if something happened, uh, sure, you're going to feel sad. You're going to feel mourning. You're going to feel grief when your a loved one dies or when you're going to a funeral or, or you know, those, 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 that's natural. You're supposed to. Ecclesiastes has that, uh, that chapter in it that says, um, it's a time for uh, for living and a time for dying, a time for to rejoice and a time to stay calm and a time for it, there's a time, there's a time, there's a time, there's a time. So we don't want to stay in a certain state all the time, especially if it's negative. Well, I should say, if it's negative, you shouldn't want to stay in that state of mind all the time, right? God created emotions. Is it? Is it? A sin when you're angry no no not at all it's only a sin when you act on it in a sinful nature in a sinful manner case in point Jesus was in the temple this actual house of prayer when they turned it in on all these people turned it in into a flea market they were selling doves they were selling goats they were selling you name it they were selling it they were selling churros. They were selling whatever it was that they were out there doing. They were selling it in the house of God, in the, in the, in the place where people praised and prayed. And Jesus was like, oh, no, you didn't. He grabbed a whip and started whipping people and yelling at them and telling them to get out this and that. And that. Why? It was a righteous anger. It was a righteous, why was it a righteous anger? Because he knew that the respect that was due to the chapel, to the actual prayer, the house of prayer was being defiled. He got mad. He got mad at that devil. He got mad at those people that allowed that to happen. That's a righteous anger. We get mad because, because it rained. We get mad because our kids are crying. We get mad when we get a, a bad grade and then we get enraged. Uh, no, just do better. No, your child's going to stop crying in a minute. It's okay. It's all right. It rained. It's okay. It's not the end of the world. It's all right. How about when you're in a wedding? How about when you're in a wedding and you see these people and the love is in the air type of thing and things are so beautiful, people cry, people get melancholy, people get, oh, they're just so, um, so happy and yet, okay, that's a, that's a good thing, right? See, feelings and emotions, um, some are good, some are bad. The ones that are bad, don't, don't prolong those. Don't stay stuck in that. You have the choice and you go to your father God and you tell him, you know what? I feel like this. I feel like that. He understands. He's the one that put that in you. He understands. But now you wait and talk to him. You wait to listen to him. And he's going to tell you what to do. He's going to tell you how, how, how to fix this. And when he does, there's going to be a peace that comes over you and a joy that comes over you that you're just going to say, man, I, how I acted on that, man, I, I feel real bad because of how I acted. But now that I brought it to the Lord and, and now I know that it's being taken care of, <sighs> you see what God does for you there? People make permanent decisions on temporary situations. Unfortunately, people who commit suicide, it's a permanent decision for something that was temporary, that that too shall pass, that too was going to pass. But people feel that there's hopeless situations, that it's hopeless. And God says, no, it's not hopeless. Come to me. I'm going to help you out in it. It's all right. I'll help you out. People get hurt, crying, 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 because they've been offended. They've been betrayed. They've been hurt. They've been, they've been deceived. People get offended. Some people, some people think, I have the right to be offended. Mm, yeah, no, no. No. Are belongs to God. 
When you fully submit who you are to God, that's God's now. You're God's now. So when someone comes up to you and you feel like you want to be offended, because being offended will keep you from your blessing. Keep that in mind. The hurt that you're feeling, the pain, the tears, the crying, the anguish, that's all real. I'm not belittling that. That's true. It's real. I've been there. I've done that. We're humans. That's what God how God created us because it's a cleansing. When you're in anguish and you're and you're and you're crying, it's a cleansing of your soul. It's a cleansing for you. It's good. Don't stay there though. You see what I'm saying? People are hurt all the time. We know that's life. It's part of it's real. But when you partner with God and not make hasty decisions because of your mindset at that moment, God will help you through it. God will help you through it. Because when you are in that mindset and you don't come out of it and you don't go to God with it, the devil's going to come and say, see, that situation's hopeless. Look, look what he did to you. Look what she did to you. Now it's revenge time. Now, you know, now fight fire with fire type of thing. And God says, let me take care of it and I'll heal you at the same time. Let me walk this out with you. Go to someone. I'm available, me personally, I'm available to you. Send me a private message. What can I do to help you? You just want a shoulder to cry on? Look, I got two. You want to vent? I got ears. Just vent. You want godly counsel? That's all I'm going to give you is godly counsel. I'm here for you. Wise counsel. That's what God... We're here. We're fellow strugglers. Go to someone that's going to uplift you. Or, as I said yesterday, you go to someone that's going to be the drill sergeant and say, Snap out of it already. <laughs> Those are good things. It may not seem like it, but it's a good thing wise and godly counsel all right wise and godly counsel and i'm trying to condense this there's so much more to it there's like a big study on this that i'm trying to condense it for you don't let your feelings and your emotions go haywire let's go to our bible verses okay jeremiah 17 jeremiah is in the old testament if you get into um job psalms proverbs then it's uh, uh, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah. Okay? Kind of give you a, a whereabouts in the Bible you are. Jeremiah 17. Go to chapter 17, verses 9 and 10. And this is what it says. This is God's word now. And this is in the, in the amplified version. Okay? I love the amplified version because sometimes it just kind of slaps you in the face. And you're like, oh, 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 oh. I guess I needed to snap out of it. It says, the heart is deceitful above all things, and it is extremely sick. Come on now. Who can understand it fully and know its secret motives? Secret motives. Okay. All right. That's why it says that it's deceitful. I, the Lord, search and examine the mind. I test the heart. To give to each man according to his ways, according to the results of his deeds. That's the same concept. That that, that you sow, so shall, so shall you reap. So whatever, you're, you're, whatever seed you're dropping, whether it's good or bad, guess what's going to come out at the end? That's going to come out at the end in the harvest. It's not bountiful harvest. It's not for good and, and it's going to be bad. This is what the Lord, got. I, the Lord, search and examine the mind. What's going on up here? What's going on? I test the heart. I'm going to put, put your heart, your motives to the test and see. It's going to come out in the wash. That's why we pray. When I, when I feel that something's not right or there's, there's some incompleteness in a situation where I, where I know that it's not done, one of the things that I pray for, for all parties involved, 
I pray to myself, I pray to God by myself, and I say, you know, God, all that's in darkness will come to your light. Whatever is hidden, whatever is in secret motive, the secret, the, you know, the motives that are in secret, the deceit in someone's heart, that's going to come out in the wash, that's going to come out because your light's going to reflect on it, God. So shall it be. You see what I'm saying? How the heart, your mind, your emotions, your feelings, they're deceitful. They're there for you. Yes, they're there for you. But when it's the bad stuff and it lingers, you don't want that. You don't want the bad stuff to linger. That, that, that should not be part of who you are. All right, let's move on. Let's move on because it's kind of going to get uglier, uglier here. <laughs> Don't you log off just yet. <laughs> don't, don't, don't log off just yet. You got to listen. We're not always right, remember? From yesterday's devotional, we're not always right. Do you have the heart of a servant but the mind of a student? We got to learn, we got to learn, we got to learn. Okay, here we go. Tighten up that seatbelt, here we go. Proverbs 28, verse 26. Proverbs 28, 26. He who trusts confidently in his own heart. No one can tell you nothing. You think you're right all the time. That spirit of pride. Mm -mm. This is what the Bible says about a person like that. He who trusts confidently in his own heart is a dull, thick-headed fool. Don't, don't, don't be mad at the messenger here. I got this straight from the Amplified Version of the Bible. Ah, but then there's a, there's a light at the end of the tunnel here. But he who walks in skillful, skillful and godly wisdom will be rescued. You see what I'm saying? Let God show you. Let God handle it. Let God take care of it. Don't rely on your feelings alone. There is a spirit of discernment. That discerning spirit. The discerning spirit. God will give you a spirit check when you know that something's wrong. There's a difference. It's not a feeling. It's a discernment. Some people have it. Some others don't. But it's called a spirit. The spirit, godly spirit of discernment. That's when you can see someone and there's some, there's just something there. There's just, there's just something there. But you're not being critical. You're not being judgmental. You're asking God what it is. God gave that to you. He kind of, kind of rattles your cage a little bit within you and say, oh, oh, there's something there. Do you treat that person differently? No, love them. Love on them. That's what God would do. You see the difference? But when you have a bad attitude and you're, mm, 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 and you don't like nobody and you can't, you can't take nobody and that's that, and that's that, they see it on your face. You've been baptized in pickle juice. Not what God wants. Not what God wants. When you come with a good attitude, when you come knowing humbly, humbly asking God to change you, that's what, God's wa that's what God wants. That's what God loves. He wants to partner with you. I've said it over and over. God wants to partner with you. We like feelings, especially when they're nice, when they're good. But the ones that are, that are, that are harmful... Ask God to show you what those are. He'll help you. He will. He did that for me. Just real quick before we pray. I remember when I was down, hitting rock bottom, emotion. I just, it, my emotions, feelings, my mind, everything out. I was gone. If I didn't, if, if it just fetal position on the floor crying day in day out this happened in 2016 and I remember just being nothing 
And my friend told me, you know, she, I, I told her what, was, what had gone on and what, what I was feeling at the time, etc., and how I had been selfish, self-centered, greedy, just mean, pride, control freak, perfectionist. And she says, oh, those are all heavy duty things, you know. And she said, are you doing daily communion? No. I do that once a month at church. And then she said, oh, no, honey. It's not a once a month at church thing. It's a daily thing in the privacy of your own room or your war room or your prayer room. In your car, by yourself. Wherever it is that you are, you do it daily. You take the communion and you tell the Lord, search my heart, God, and whatever is not of you, I don't want it. So tell me. And he did. You know, he didn't, he didn't throw it all on me. Well, you this, you that, you this, you that, you this, you that all in one shot oh no because then I would have been so discouraged I would not have wanted to continue and one of the first things that he told me was that I had anger issues I just didn't express it I didn't wear it on my sleeve I was blowing up inside and even when God told me I said me no not me Oh, what an eye-opening thing that was. And you know, when I finally released that, I said, okay, God, with my daily communion, I said, what's the next one? And when we're done with that, what's the next one? You know, I went to the Christian bookstore and bought a little, a little box. There were 80 of those communion cups and wafers together. I bought one. And every day I would do a daily communion with God. Knowing what the, what the bread represented, what the, what the juice represented. Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and I think it's verse 28 or 29, it says, Examine your heart before you take the cup. So I started with that. And I gave it to God. And I said, it's your blood, God. It's your body. You sacrificed so that I could be clean, so that I could be washed. I went through a box and a half. Eighty plus forty, <laughs> roughly. And now I, st I do it periodically, daily for about a week. Then I do it again periodically next month or something for about a week or so on my own I don't wait for it for the church to do it we can do it by ourselves help me to be a good testimony God is there to help you and I'm going to pray right now for you for everyone that's watching for everyone that's going to watch for everyone who's commented for everyone who has subscribed for everyone for every one of you that has shed a tear because you're hurting for everyone that has shared this broadcast for everyone that you don't know which way to go for everyone who is tired of trying to do right I'm going to lift you up in prayer right now but you know that when I pray I give a few seconds just to, to quiet so that God can speak to you. Because there are times when we pray and it's too quick because we live in a hustle bustle kind of a world. And God's like, yeah, but I just like, oh. she left. God, help me through this. God, I need your help. God, if you would just show me and tell me. And off to go to God. Right on the tip of my tongue. I was right about to tell you when you left. God's ready to tell you something. So in the prayer, that's what I do. I take some time and you listen. If God shows you in a vision, if God shows you by, by a, um, it's like a, a, 
someone explained it that it was like a blanket of joy a blanket of man I'm proud of you that God told him there was a, a brother from church that that's what he said someone said that they see like almost screenshots like of the old movies you know uh, that that's how God speaks to them some people have it audibly they can hear God audibly or they can see nature and God speaks to them through a song, through a smell. And God will speak to you any way he needs to speak to you. But are we giving him the time to do it? Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. We live in a world, God, that we are just so rushed. We don't take the time to just stop and be still. And, we, and we're, we're riding on the coattails of our emotions and our feelings, Father God. And wherever they go, it's flinging us right behind. Shoom, shoom, shoom. But Father God, right now I want to say that for everyone that's watching, everyone that's sharing, everyone that needs you right now, needs a word. I lift them up to you right now, Father God, and then you're going to tell them something. But I lift them up to you right now, Father God, so that they can understand that feelings you gave it to us. But how we, how we uh, deposit them into a situation is on us. Help us to make the right choice, God. Help us that in the decisions that we make, that we seek you and wise counsel, not the emotions that will drive us. Because that could mean that it's the wrong decision. We give all of ourselves to you, Father God. Emotions too. And now, Father God, you have something to say. And we're going to remain quiet. And we're going to be listening right now. Whether it's through our ears or through our tears. Ha! Huh. It doesn't matter because you're listening. And, we're, and, and we right now, we're going to stay quiet because you have something to say, Lord. You are worthy, holy God. You are praiseworthy, holy God, and we have a heart of gratitude, Lord. And we thank you, Father God, because you're good and you're strong and you're mighty for us, God. You want to bring us balance, God, and we want it, Lord. Is it going to challenge us? Yes. And that's a good thing, God, because we have you in the middle of this journey with us, holding our hands in it. We thank you for who you are, Father God. We say yes and amen to your will. We say yes and amen to your way, God. And we are fully surrendered, Father. For it's in the powerful name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We pray these things, Father God. We say yes, amen, so shall it be. Amen. Amen. All right, I want to thank you, guys. I want to thank you for joining me. Uh, we'll see you back tomorrow. Tomorrow is Promotional Friday. If you do have a business you want me to promote, send me a private message. I'll get the information. I just need things like, you know, a contact, the name of your business, the name of the owners, or whatever. If it's you, whatever, whatever the case may be, I'll promote that for you. Be people of integrity. Be a business of integrity. If I'm going to promote it, absolutely i love y'all miss erica washington girl i am so proud of you you went in there like a champ and i pray healing over your hand oh to the left hand over your hand quick recovery amen and amen i love y'all we'll see you soon we'll see you tomorrow i love you bye